Hiya, and welcome back to A New Dawn. The game that teaches us that Retsu is just... I, I don't know. I don't know. It's been months. It's been a couple months. I don't know what has been updated. So, let's just hop right in. So... Hey. Let's not go too hard this time. You are sleeping soundly. Before you went to bed, you put up some curtains so you can sleep in and enjoy the dark. Last night, you fell asleep right after talking to Evelyn. It was good to talk to her. You forgot to put your phone on the nightstand. You hear the horrible sound of a blaring alarm coming from your phone. You look for it between the sheets but can't find it. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the sensor. I do not want another... I do not want another situation. Because <laughs> that was ungodly. But can't find it. After a seemingly endless search, you find it under a pillow. You bring the phone close to your face to turn off that damn alarm. The glow from the phone blinds you for a moment, and you can't see anything. Ah, fuck. You close your eyes for a second, for a few seconds, and give yourself time to adjust. Still drowsy, you pick up the phone again and turn off the alarm. Finally! What time is it? Why is this alarm going off? I don't remember setting one yesterday. You check the clock app and notice that it is an old alarm that you forgot to turn off. You're still drowsy when you notice you have a text message. You check recent calls and you have a call from a number you don't read. You don't know yesterday afternoon. Matches the sender of the message. When you read it, you know immediately that it is Kale. The, in the message, he mentions to you that his guitar will cost $100 to repair. Now, as you read it, you think about how you're going to pay him. You fall asleep again without sending a response. After a few minutes, wake up again with your phone on your chest. I must get up. Ugh, I've slept enough. You sit up. You get up and stretch on the edge of your bed for a minute. Fuck. You get up and sit on the edge of your bed for a moment. You stretch wide and have a big yawn. It's still a little early. I'll take a shower and make some breakfast since I have time. Might as well explore the city for a little bit. You head to the bathroom to take a shower. Yesterday, the landlord had told you that the hot water would be running by the afternoon. Hopefully, this morning you will be able to enjoy a warm shower. Haha! <laughs> I remembered this time. Oh, whoa. You enter the shower and step into the water. It feels so good to have the warm water running down your back and face. You clean your whole body from head to toe. You take a little bit longer than usual because the warm water is very pleasant. The warm water feels so good that you lose track of time until your stomach starts rumbling. And brings you back to reality. Hmm? Yesterday, I fell asleep after eating almost nothing except a few cookies. I'm really hungry. You step out of the shower and the bathroom is full of steam. It's hard to see where you're going. You make sure to dry your coat completely on the mat so as to not get the apartment floor wet. As you finish drying your coat, you hear your phone ringing. You finish drying off, pick up your phone and check the notification bar. It's nothing but junk mail. You slide down the notification bar to see if there had been any more messages delivered and notice a message from Kale that you didn't reply to. Right, I fell asleep and forgot to answer. You open the fur chat application to reply to Kale's message. Hi, sorry for the delay, I just woke up. You send the message, and after a few seconds, Kale replies. Well, at last. So here's the deal. An acquaintance will check the guitar and get a firm quote for the repair costs. He said it would be around $100 without looking at the guitar, so I wanted to have it quoted properly. Damn, $100? I don't have that amount at the moment. Whatever. Make sure you get it by the end of the week. Are you busy today? I have a class. After that, I am free. Why? Come to the music club after class to discuss the situation in more detail. The person who will assess the damage and repair the guitar will also be there at the club, in case you have any questions. See you there. I will be there. You head back to your room to change. Hmm, what should I wear today? Let's see. This and this. Done. Alright, I think I'm safe. Two hundred dollarinos? You only have four doubloons? Oh no! Uh, oh god damn. Sorry Lug, you don't have any doubloons. Oh, hiya. Uh... Oh, welcome, uh, welcome to the Shadow Realm. I've been there before. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm, I'm waiting to see how Amethyst reacts to the fact that there's two cats. You head to you head to the kitchen as your stomach is rumbling with hunger. After showering, you feel more alive. All that's left is to have some breakfast and you're ready to start your day. You open the refrigerator. There's nothing inside. Shit, I forgot to buy groceries. Your stomach continues to growl. You're getting to the point where you begin to feel a slight pain in your abdomen. All right, all right, I hear you. I'll find something around town to eat. Although, considering the news I got this morning about that guitar, I'm going to need every penny I have. Aw, damn, you figured it out. You pick up your phone to check your bank account. Looks like you only have enough for two weeks' worth of food. If I pay for the guitar repair, there won't be anything left for food for the next two weeks. Fuck my life. Heavy sigh. You stand for a minute in the dining room, evaluating your options. Eve might be able to help me. I'll message her. You write a message to Evelyn saying that you need to talk to her urgently, but as usual, there is no reply. Bah, it usually takes her a few hours to respond. I'll just be patient. Well, better get back to the problem at hand. Breakfast. The cafeteria food was very cheap and tasted very good. You get ready to leave, but not before grabbing your phone and quickly checking your social networks. You receive a notification about the weather forecast. Looks like it will be a sunny day today. You are ready to get out of here. You grab your backpack and make sure that this time everything is in order. It's time to go in search of something to eat for breakfast. It's a beautiful day outside. Birds are singing from the treetops. I wouldn't say it's bad. Because Lord knows, I type the same fucking way. I probably type the same fucking way. It's a beautiful day outside. Birds are singing from the treetops. The weather is perfect. The warm rays of the sun on your face make you feel more energetic to start your day. You enjoy the scenery as you walk aimlessly through the city streets. Yesterday was a bit hectic, so you didn't have time to notice how beautiful the city is. Oh, yeah, that's allowed. You walk aimlessly while lost in thought. Not only are you hungry, but the situation with Kale's guitar has really been weighing on your mind. Fortunately, someone notices this and comes over to talk to you. Be careful where you walk. It's Shiron. He seems to be heading towards the campus. Shit, it's Shiron. I guess Kale's already told him about what happened at the music club. Whoa, dude, pay attention. Pay more attention while walking down the street. You might bump into something or trip. Are you okay? You look like you saw a dead body. No, it's not that. I was just lost in my thoughts and kind of freaked out when I saw you out of nowhere. I see. Want to try and clear your mind by chatting a bit? Now that I remember, last night we didn't get to talk much. I can't wait to hear how your visit to the club went. Hearing that makes you a little nervous, but Shiron doesn't seem to notice. It's still early. Are you heading to campus? Something like that. I was looking for a good place to have some breakfast. One of my options was to have breakfast at the campus cafeteria. The food in the cafeteria is pretty good. It's a good option. We could go there and grab a bite together if you don't mind me tagging along. You can tell me what you did yesterday at the music club, and I could also give you more information if you need it. This sounds great. Let's head over to the cafeteria. You both start walking towards the campus. As you walk, you think about how to explain what happened yesterday at the music club to Chiron. And tell me, what do you think of Maplestone? Isn't it charming? It's a very nice place, although it, I feel like it's taking me a while to adapt. I understand that. Once you get used to it, you'll have a great time. Just out of curiosity, how many years have you been studying at Maplestone? Five years. If all goes well, this should be my last year here. It's amazing how fast time goes by. I guess that's how, how it goes when you're having fun. Both arrive at the camp campus and immediately head to the cafeteria. Fortunately, there are a few students. There are plenty of places to sit. I had breakfast at home. I'll wait at one of the tables while you buy your breakfast. I will try not to take too long. You leave Shiron alone while he goes through some papers. It seems they are related to the music club. As you wait your turn to order your food, you feel someone touch your back. You quickly turn to see who it is. It's Derek! Hi, Derek! who also seems to be waiting to get something to eat. Good morning, Red. Hang on, I got I got to remember his voice. Good morning, Retsu. Glad to see you here. I think is his voice. Good morning, Derek. How are you? How is your cut? Does it hurt? Derek smiles, raising his elbow. It stopped hurting a long time ago. Thanks for asking. <laughs> 
He allowed a sigh of relief. Derek pats you on the head. By the way, yesterday you mentioned that you visited other clubs. Have any of them caught your attention? Oh yeah, it's going great. I've seen a lot of cool things, and now I have an appointment at the music club this afternoon to see a bit more. I see. That explains why I saw you with Shiron earlier. Either way, my offer from yesterday still stands. If you want to visit the swimming club, let me know, and I will be happy to show you around. Thank you very much. I will keep it in mind. Derek pulls his phone out of his pocket and shows you a QR code with his contact information. Here are my details. Feel free to give me a call if you need anything. You scan the code and save Derek's contact details into your phone. It's your turn to order your breakfast. You gotta look at the menu and decide it on omelets. Derek, did you want something to eat? I'm happy to grab it for you. No, I just came over so I could talk to you for a little bit. Even though I finished my classes for the morning, I have some business to see at the swimming club. I hope to see you again soon. Derek leaves the cafeteria. After a few minutes, your breakfast is ready. You make your way to where Shiron is sitting waiting. That looks del- That looks delicious. Bon appetit. Thank you very much. You start eating your breakfast while Shiron continues to go through his things. You were starving, you were practically inhaling your food, but you still felt satisfied. On the other hand, it seems that Shiron had finished what he was doing and turned his gaze towards you. So tell me, Retsu, what did you think of yesterday's visit? First of all, I want to apologize for not being able to show you the club personally. Don't worry, you had important business to do. Yesterday's visit was a little bit... I wouldn't know what to call it. Intense, perhaps? Shiron looks at you with confusion when he hears your words. Oh, you mean Kale? I know Kale can be a little intimidating at first, but he's not a bad kid. Did he leave and not show you around? No, he did explain a couple of things to me and showed me around the club. I did something I shouldn't have and ended up causing an accident. An accident? <sighs> There's his grippers. Kale didn't mention anything about it to me. You let out a nervous sigh, feeling uneasy about sharing what went down with Kale while he was away. Kale showed me the recording studio, and while we were there, he received a phone call. He left me alone for a few minutes. You finished telling him what happened yesterday at the music club. Obviously, you didn't tell him about finding Kale changing clothes. I see. I'm sorry you went through that. Kale's guitar is a great sentimental value for him. It's normal for him to be so angry, although I will talk to him about it. Have you discussed the repair of his guitar? We talked a bit by text this morning. We agreed to meet at the music club this afternoon. He said he would be there to discuss the repairs. I hope they can fix it soon. I would love to be able to help, but unfortunately, I can only stick my nose into the problem if you were both members of the club. Besides what happened yesterday, do you have any doubts about the club? Well, before leaving, I found this pamphlet on one of the tables. You take the pamphlet out of your backpack and show it to Shiron. Ah, that's a club member benefit. If you're a member of the club, you get discounts at one of the local stores in town. It is very helpful for those members who are in need of repairs, or want to replace the instrument they already have with the new one. Do you play any instruments, Retsu? No, I've always wanted to learn to play one, but haven't had the opportunity. I understand. Well, if you decide to join us, that will be very helpful. Exactly. Maintenance and supplies for instruments can be quite expensive depending on what you need. As you both talk about the music club, you notice the time. Your class will be starting soon. I would love to keep talking, but I have to go. My class is about to start. Okay, good luck in your classes. Maybe I'll see you later at the music club. You'll leave your train at its place and leave the cafeteria. You follow the directions your phone gives you until you reach an open field with a running track. There are a lot of students there, so you approach the field with confidence. I wonder how long it is. I'd like to try to do the full circuit to see if I still haven't lost my speed. Oh, this bitch. Come on over here! No, I, I can't remember his voice. I can't remember his voice, so I, I need to come up with a new voice for him. I need to come up with a new voice for him. And we're not going to skip at all anymore. I skipped a little bit. We're not skipping anymore. And I need to come up with a new voice for him. Uh, he's a derg. He's a dragon. So I feel like his voice could be a little rougher. And then I can just... There we go. Come on over here. You approach Nitro, who is at the edge of the track with the stopwatch measuring the time of those who are currently running. You're the one I wanted to meet. Nitro comes over with a smile and pats you on the shoulder. Me? Why? Wilbur and I had a discussion about you this morning. He showed me your transcript and it was quite interesting. Your name is Retsu, right? Oh, I didn't realize that teachers could share my record so easily. Yes. Yes, we can. You were a top runner in your school years ago. That got my attention. 
I don't like this voice. I want to see what you're capable of. If I didn't put you on a team because I wanted to see your full potential, in a few minutes your opponent will be here. You can wait around and stretch for a bit. It'll be fun. Trust me. You nod towards Nitro and walk under a tree. You stretch a bit and sit down to wait. As time goes by, the group finishes their lap around the track. Some have good times, others are slow and end up out of breath. Just do the Ray voice. See, that's the thing. Two characters already have the Ray voice and one of them is about to appear. Some have good times, others are slow and end up out of breath. While the groups have finished, it seems that tiredness has made them forget that you didn't run along with them. You hear a whistle and turn to see where Nitro is. He's signaling you from a distance to come closer. You get up and start walking over to where he is. Well, it's time for the main show. I've been waiting for this all day. I'm excited to see your stamina and see what you're capable of. I'll give it my best shot. I haven't ran against anyone in a long time, but I think I can win this. Look, here comes your opponent. Hey, you're taking long! Nitro waves his arm at someone coming towards you. It's Roberto, the star back of the rugby team. Yesterday you saw him running in the front row and you know how fast he is. There goes my hope of winning. No, I have to give it my best shot. Retsu, hello again. Are you the talented student that Nitro told me about? Yes, that's him. Aren't you get every last drop of potential out of him? I guess there's no other choice. Sorry, Retsu. I can't show you any mercy this time. Roberto extends his hand to you. Let's have fun. You shake his hand in response. Who knows? Maybe I'll surprise you. You and Roberto get into position. You look. You turn to look at Nitro, and his look shows how excited he is to see you compete. Nitro prepares to blow the whistle. As he leaves, you get into position for a few seconds. You and Roberto bolt off. Your classmates can't even begin to compete with the two of you. Roberto is narrowly ahead, but that doesn't worry you at all. You start to feel the adrenaline rushing through your body. It's a sensation you haven't felt for a long time. The sensation of the wind hitting your face and running constantly makes you want to run faster and faster still. Roberto notices this and starts to speed up after you. Neither of you pay attention to how far you have run. Roberto also wants to see what you are capable of. You keep a constant pace until your nitro's whistle. Both runners had already passed the finish line a few seconds ago and kept going around the track without realizing they had finished. Roberto, 50 seconds. As expected. Retsu, 54 seconds. You came closer to catching Roberto than anyone else in the school. Unbelievable! Nitro seems very happy to see the results. At a glance, you can tell he's passionate about sports. Now I may have found a second diamond in the rough for this university. Both will make very good rivals. While Nitro is happy about the results, Roberto comes up to you and pats you on the back. Well, you really surprised me, Retsu. You are fast, although I always knew it. I have never seen someone run like you until yesterday when I saw you running through the halls. I had a lot of fun and hope you can race friendly again. It would really help me improve a lot, having a formidable opponent like you. After a few chats and some advice from Nitro, all the students are free to go. They accept the group with the longest time. Hit the track and go around one more time. You walk to one of the corridors with some public benches and sit down for a few minutes. You definitely need to rest for a while. Well, it's almost time to visit the music club. I hope Kale is not too upset about what happened. You let out a slight sigh as you rub your neck nervously. What happened yesterday was a bit intense. I hope we can put it behind us quickly. You start walking towards the music club. There's still a few minutes before you agree to meet with Kale, so you decide to take your time walking through the halls. On the way there, you can see through the classroom windows. Other clubs are doing their various activities. Some of them look like fun, so I'll have to figure out which club I will join. The music club seems very interesting, but I don't know if they will be willing to accept me after what I did. After a while, you arrive at the music club lounge. The door is open, so you decide to enter. As you enter, you notice that the club is full of people, some chatting, others trying out some in instruments. You can even hear someone tuning a guitar in the recording studio. I don't see Kale anywhere. Maybe I'm too early? You look around for Kale or someone you know. Neither Kale or Sheeran are here yet. I guess I'll just wait for one of the two to show up. As you are looking for a place to sit, one of the club members sees you and approaches. He is a husky with soft fur and striking red glasses. The husky extends his paw and gives you a firm squeeze. 
I gotta figure out his voice. Uh, uh, Oron. He's very cute. He's very cute. What should his voice be? Can I go ham? Am, am I allowed to go ham on his voice? Because I have one in mind, but I don't know if it'll fit. Though it'd be fucking hilarious. Girl, don't give him the Mickey Mouse voice, LMAO. I wasn't going to. Uh, hello, welcome. My name is Aura. Nice to meet you. Hello, my name is Retsu. The pleasure is mine. I've never seen you here before. Are you coming to visit the club for the first time? That's right. This is my first time here. Well, my second time. Oh, really? I don't remember seeing you. But it doesn't matter. If you came back, I guess that means you want to join the club. Oron approaches you and grabs you by both paws while wagging his tail excitedly. The Retsu. Tell me. What instrument do you play? Will it be the piano? Or maybe the accordion? I know, maybe something more exotic. A harp! You let out a nervous laugh in response. The truth is, I don't know how to play any instrument. My intention is to join to learn how to play one. You stare at Oron, expecting a look of disappointment in your response. But instead, he only gets even more excited. Hang on, hang on. Let me, let me prepare, just... That's great! Then this is the right place for you! Oron pulls out a pamphlet and shows you a large number of instruments. What instrument do you play? Is that a guitar on your back? No, although I can still play the guitar. It's a lute, my favorite instrument! Oron takes the instrument out of its case and shows it to you. Oh, it's the first time I've seen one! It looks very pretty! It looks a lot like a guitar. Oron carefully stores the lute in its case and puts it on its back. As I said, there is a wide variety of instruments here. Take your time to decide. I know how to play many instruments. If you need some help or advice, you can always count on me. Wait, is he wearing a shirt? Hold up. Hold up. Is he wearing a shirt? I can see the hoodie. Yeah, I think he is. But I'm getting confused by this right here. I'm getting confused by that right here. Is that just his fur or is that his shirt? Is his shirt ripped? I mean, obviously he's ripped. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, probably. Oron has a big smile on his face. That all sounds fantastic, but first I have some business to take care of. I arranged to meet someone here today, but still no sign of him. Are you waiting for a friend? I know everyone in the club. Who are you waiting for? I am here to see Kale. I have some unfinished business with him. Oron's face changes from one of joy to one of shock in just an instant. Uh, oh, hey, is everything okay? Yeah! I just didn't expect Kaleo to have a friend. <laughs> oh shit, I cannot do that last. <laughs> if not every day that someone comes looking for that grumpy guy. Kaleo? Yes, it's the nickname I gave Kale. He doesn't like me calling him that, but I do it anyway. Oron smiles and sticks out his tongue mockingly. Kale is already here, but he's in the recording studio. Come with me, he must be almost finished. We can wait for him inside the recording studio. You follow Oron to the recording studio, the place where it all happened. <laughs> but... D you feel a little nervous about going back there, but decide not to keep Oron waiting and go in. As you enter, you hear a beautiful melody. You look through the glass and see Kale, who is playing the guitar. Kale is so focused that he hasn't even noticed your presence. It is the first time you've heard this melody, but somehow it conveys a certain melancholy and sadness. Kale's eyes are closed as he plucks at the guitar's strings. Kale has captured your full attention with his performance. You're really feeling it. So much that even your fur starts to bristle. Kale's one of the best musicians in this club. I'm sure you can learn a lot of things from him. K 
Kale remains focused while playing the guitar. He then opens his eyes for an instant and makes eye contact with you. This causes Kale to lose his concentration and stop. He stands up, puts the guitar in a case, and approaches you. Hey, why are you stopping? You were doing great. I don't feel comfortable using that guitar, but thanks for lending me one of yours. I understand, no problem. By the way, this guy here is looking for you. It's good to see you make new friends. So you kept your word. Oron takes a look at both of you and is confused. He's the one who damaged my guitar. He's here to talk about the cost of repair. And he is not my friend. Oh, I understand. Although it seems that two of you have already met. This is Oron. His father is the owner of the music store that supplies the instruments to the music club. His dad will be the one to repair my guitar. I ask you to come here so that you can hear the repair price for yourself and not think that I'm cheating you. I get that I wouldn't think that you are cheating me. Yesterday was my mistake. I have no reason to not give you the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. We chill out a bit and I'll give you the diagnosis of the guitar. Good. Kale picks up his guitar and places it on one of the tables. Oron begins to check the guitar very carefully. Have you been here long? No, I arrived a few minutes ago. I stayed talking to Oron in the main hall. I see. I need to talk to you about a couple of things. We can do it later when we are on our own. You know, about what happened yesterday after you dropped my guitar. You feel a little nervous remembering everything you saw and the thought of almost getting punched. Alright, we'll go somewhere else and work it out after Oron is finished. Of course. They both remain silent as they watch Oron examine the guitar. Well, I get that bit. The enamel on the lower right side of the guitar needs to be replaced. For that to happen, it will be necessary to sand that area of the guitar down to remove the enamel and put a new coating. Oh, from what I can see, some of the guitar strings are damaged. That would be another expense. I mentioned to you yesterday while we were talking about it that the repair price would be 100 But now that I see it with my own eyes, I'm sorry to tell you that it will be more expensive. Hearing that, you get a little nervous. You don't have that much money at the moment, and you still don't have an answer from Evelyn. So, based on what you have seen now, what is the total cost of the repair? With labor, quality paint, and enamel, and string replacement, it would, to it would total approximately $250. On a scale from 1 to 10, my friends, we're fucked! Kale turns to see you and only notices your expression. It seems that your soul is escaping from your body. It's the cheapest quote you'll find if you want to repair it. Hey, look on the bright side, but being a member of the music club, you get a death count. The death count will help a lot. One moment. Er Oron pulls out his phone and starts doing calculations. And with the death count included, the price would be 130. Wait, does that mean I have to join the music club to get that discount? Not necessarily. Don't worry about that. We are not so cruel to force you to join the club for a discount. Kale will be the one making the payment, so the discount will apply. How long will the repair take? Mm, two to three days. Kale turns to look to you and nods his head. You can tell he is still pissed he will be he will be without his guitar for another two to three days after the payment is made. Are you okay with this or do you have any complaints? That's fine with me, but I don't have the money at the moment. Would you mind waiting a couple of days? It's okay. Doesn't seem like I have much of a choice, does it? You feel a great relief to hear his words. Now all that's left is to get the money somehow. Well, my work is done. Kaleo knows where the store is. When you have the money, look for me there. Stop calling me that! Make me. Oron says cheekily as he leaves the recording studio. Kale lets out a deep sigh and begins to gather his things. When he finishes taking all his things, he walks to the door. He turns back to look at you. Are you going to stand there all day or are you coming with me? Yeah, uh, coming. They both leave the music club and walk down the hallway so they can talk quietly. I want to talk to you about. Kale's phone starts ringing in his pocket. Kale pulls it out and answers a call. Hello? Yes, it's me. What? Yes. I understand. I'm on my way. Kale cuts off the call and starts walking quickly towards the campus exit. Something important came up. We'll talk about it later. Kale looks around to make sure there are no teachers nearby and books it down the hallway. 
Well, that was unexpected. I hope everything is all right. He looked a little worried. You pick up your phone and you wonder if Evelyn answered your message just yet. Damn, still no answer. Evelyn, I need you. Please answer. You send many stickers in the hope that Evelyn will respond. Nothing. Well, all I can do is wait. It's still early. I should take advantage of the afternoon to go shopping for groceries. I'll go to the supermarket I saw on my way to campus. I wonder if I can find if I can find the same products that area that I used to buy at home. As you walk toward the campus exit, you think about what other places you might visit in the city after you've done your shopping. On your way out of the campus, you look around to see if there is any sign of Wilbert or anyone else, but there seems to be no one else around. It's a pity. It would have been nice to be able to talk to someone about what places I should can visit in the city. I guess I'll just explore until I find something interesting. It's a nice afternoon. The sun is shining and there's a nice breeze blowing against your fur. I know, sad. While walking to the supermarket, you decide to stop at Javier's Cafe. I should stop by and say thank you for the cookies yesterday. They were delicious. You grab the door handle and try to enter, but the door won't open. You put your head close to the glass and notice that you can't see anyone inside. The place is closed. Mm, that's strange. I thought I heard Javier tell me that they are open every day. Maybe I got it wrong. You continue on your way until you reach the supermarket. As you approach, the doors automatically open and a pleasant breeze hits your fur. Ah, air conditioning. Just what I needed. You walk in and see a few people shopping. Most of them look like they are Maplestone students. You take a shopping cart and start walking through the aisles of the supermarket. I can recognize some of the products I used to buy at home, but since I still don't know if Evelyn will be able to help me or not with some funds, I will try not to spend so much. You grab the basic food items such as bread, milk, cereals, among other things. I think that's enough for now. I'll come back if I need anything else. You make your way to one of the cashiers. Fortunately, the waiting line is not long. There's only a little girl in front of you. She's a little girl in a beautiful yellow dress holding a stuffed animal in her arms. She also has a shopping basket with a juice and some cookies inside. Hi there. Hello! The girl gives a basket to the cashier and the cashier starts scanning her products. Well done, your total will be six fifty. The girl starts counting the coins in her hand but she seems to be a little nervous. The girl counts the coins over and over again until the cashier gets her attention. Is everything alright? Yeah, it's just a little more expensive than I remembered. I'm very sorry about that. It's possible that some of the prices may have went up a bit. It's okay. I'll just buy the cookies for now, I guess. The cashier takes the juice and sets it aside. The girl gives a coin to the cashier and takes her cookies. Seeing the girl leaving her juice makes you feel sorry for her. You approach the cashier. Hey there, if it's alright with you, I'd like to pay for that. The cashier turns to look at you and smiles in response to what you're about to do. Sure, one moment, please. The girl turns to look at you in confusion. You just wave your hand at her, asking her to come closer. At first she looks wary, but you hold out your hand with the juice. He comes over and takes it from your hand gently. Thank you very much, sir. The girl says in a low voice, waves at you, and runs off towards the exit of the building. Deep down, it kind of hurt that she called you sir, but in the end, the girl seemed very happy. You were glad to have helped her. Retsu is so iconic for that. That was very kind of you. Are you new around here? I haven't seen you before. Yes, I moved here recently. My name is Retsu. The pleasure is mine. My name is Emmanuel. You begin You begin to move your purchases along the conveyor belt, and Emmanuel scans each one. Did you move here to study at Maplestone? That's right, I moved in yesterday. Today was my second day of classes. Do you also study there? Not just yet, but I work here so I can save up some money to attend classes there someday. Have you tried to get a scholarship? Yes, I try, but I only got half a scholarship. I work here to raise the other half of the money I need. Hopefully next year I'll be there. Emmanuel finishes scanning your products, puts them in a bag, and charges you for them. Here you go, it was nice to meet you. You take the bags and leave the supermarket. On your way out, you meet a familiar face, although he doesn't seem too thrilled to see you. It is Kale, and he's standing next to the girl you saw inside the supermarket. The girl takes Kale's hand, he crouches down and talks to her for a few seconds. Kale sighs and starts walking towards you. Hi. It's good to see you again. Kale may have said that it was good to see you again, but his expression says otherwise. You haven't heard a more blatant lie in your life. Carrie told me what happened. Thank you very much for helping her. Now that you see them together, you notice a great resemblance in them. She seems much nicer than Kale is. It was nothing. I was happy to help. Is Carrie your sister? Kale nods and gives the little girl a push. My name is Carrie. Thanks. Thank you for helping me. My name is Retsu. It was nothing. I'm happy to help such a pretty girl like you. You extend your hand to her, and she responds to your greeting. 
Well, how much did you spend? Hmm? Why? I'll pay you what you spent for the juice you bought for my sister. Nope, I won't let you. I did it because I wanted to. Kale turns to look at Carrie and then looks at you. Hmm. Well, that's what you want. Since we're here, we can talk. I have some important things to ask you. Can we go to the park? Car Kale reaches down and pats Carrie on the head. It's not far. Why not? Kale and Carrie start walking. You stay behind, but Kale talks to you without even turning to look at you. Are you coming or what? Y yes, I'm coming. You follow Kale and Carrie to the park. It's not too far from the supermarket. The atmosphere is very quiet. There are children playing and some birds singing. The sun is setting and you see a beautiful sky of different colors. Kale sits at one of the tables off to the side of the sidewalk. You sit at the other end of the table and place your purchases on the table. I'll go play in the flower field. Be careful. Don't go too far. I am very scared right now. Not because it's Kale. Because it's already terrifying. No, it's because of the fact he has a fucking smile on his face. That is terrifying. The goddamn buff emo possum shouldn't have a fucking smile. Yeah, it's cute, but it's fucking terrifying. Be careful. Don't go too far. Carrie leaves, leaving you alone with Kale. You feel a little nervous being alone with him. Kale notices this and stares at you. Don't make that face. I'm not going to hit you. You talked to Sharon today, didn't you? Yes, I met him on my way to Maplestone this morning. Kale clicks his tongue when he hears that. That explains a lot of things. Did you tell him what happened? Well, I told him about my damaging your guitar, but I left out the part about, you know... At least you know how to choose your words well. That is to say, just between us. Kale says this with a somewhat serious expression. He seems concerned about it. I, I promise not to say anything. Well... Kale stands silently Kale stands silently watching Carrie play in the gardens of the park. I don't know what I should do right now. Should I go? Or perhaps should I try to talk to him? Which one? Yeah, that that's new. Him being able to blink is new. Oh, we can do all. Yay, also, hiya, Damien. Yeah. Uh, about your guitar, is there a problem if it takes me a little while to pay for the repair? When I mentioned that I needed a few days to get you the money, you looked worried. Obviously, it's a problem. As I mentioned, you at the music club. Some of us work composing songs for other clubs, such as singing clubs. It's a good way to earn a little extra money. I have some jobs waiting on me, so yes, this is wasting my time and stopping me from earning money. Hey, what would happen if Sharon finds out what happened at the music club? Why do you want to know? Are you planning to threaten me with that? No, I'm just curious. Hmm. If Sharon finds out what happened, I will receive a long talk of punishment. Rumors spread fast, so you'd have a lot of students wondering what happened. Honestly, it would fucking suck to have to go through all that. So it's in your best interest to keep this between us. The sky is getting darker and darker. The children playing in the parks have already gone home, and only the sound of crickets chirping remains. It is getting late. We need to get out of here. Carrie! It's time to go home! Carrie listens in the distance and start walking, starts walking towards you. Hey, thank you for helping my sister today. You should get home before dark. Maplestone is a safe city, but it's not a good idea to walk alone at night. Carrie approaches you and hands you a small bouquet of flowers she picked. Here, this is for you. Thanks for the juice. It was delicious. You have my phone number. Send me a message as soon as you get the money for the repair. Kale and Carrie continue on their way and leave you alone in the park. You stand up and stretch a bit while letting out a loud yawn. I'm exhausted. I'll have a quick dinner and go to sleep. Wait, what? Yeah, he is. Quick dinner and go to sleep. You start walking home thinking about everything that happened today. At least I was able to clear things up with Kale. It seemed calmer than yesterday. The Kale I saw on campus is very different from the one I saw today in the park. 
After a while, you get home. You head to the kitchen and put away everything you bought. You are so tired that you decide to have something light and easy to prepare for dinner. I guess some cereal wouldn't be bad. While you are having dinner, you check your phone. Unfortunately, there is still no answer from Evelyn. You finish eating and start cleaning up after yourself. As you put your bowl in the dishwasher, your phone starts ringing. Walk over to see who is calling, and it's finally Evelyn returning your call. You quickly try to answer the call. Damn, since your paws are wet, it causes the touch of your cause the touch screen of your phone to not detect your fingers while well, you dry your paws on the clothes and answer the call just in time. Hi, Evelyn. Where were you? I tried to contact you all day. Hi, sorry for not answering. A guy asked me out and I spent the whole day out with him. I didn't check my phone until I got home. You sent me five messages and 50 stickers, so you must be desperate. Did something happen? Remember the guy I told you about yesterday? Yes. What was his name? The guitarist, right? Kale. Yeah, that's the one. Did something new happen? Tell me all about it. <laughs> he sent me a message this morning saying to meet him at the music club. Turns out that the repair cost is more expensive than I expected. I see where this is going. You want your little sister to bail you out. <laughs> Doesn't mind no about this. I'm sure she'll help you out if you tell her what happened. Well, it's my first time living alone. I don't want to cause her any trouble so quickly. It's barely been two days since I left home. I'm supposed to be the good son. I don't want to worry her. Good son? Are you telling me I'm bad? Evelyn, please. <laughs> Just kidding. How much money do you need? The repair will cost $130. $130? This is cheaper than I thought. One of my exes once repaired a guitar, and it cost him a fortune. I have the money I'll save to repair my bike, but that's okay. I'll send you the money, but I want something in return. You hear Evelyn chuckle lightly on the other end of the phone. Well, what do you want? You said this guy sent you a message this morning. I'll give you the money in exchange for his phone number. Really? Sure, why not? Listen to how you described him yesterday. He seems to be just my type. Well, it's just that... <laughs> Just like that. You like that butt, don't ya? What? No! It's just that. <laughs> don't worry, I'm just teasing you. You know, I need you to give me his phone number. I'll figure out a way for you to make it up to me. I don't like to play with other people's love lives and even less with my little brother's love life. I'd like to see what he looks like, though. Someday I have to take a picture of him show it to me one moment evelyn is silent for a few minutes done i've sent the money to your pop hat account i sent a bit more just in case you need to buy something extra you know what i mean thank you so much thank you so much ev i owe you one i don't know what i could have done without you it's nothing little brother i'd like to keep i'd love to keep talking to you but i have another appointment tomorrow morning and i need to rest talk to you later I love you very much. Then I want to hear more of your stories with Kale. Goodbye. Evelyn hangs up and you finish cleaning up. I have so much fun doing that voice. Well, I think I'm ready to sleep. Tomorrow will be a big day. You take off your clothes, leaving on only your underwear. You lie down in your bed and hug one of your pillows. It's cold. You're so good. Hmm. Tomorrow I don't have, I don't have classes. I guess I'll just explore the city. I wonder if I can find someone to come along with me. As you think about who you might accompany you, the only person who comes to mind is Kale. Kale, that would be almost impossible. Sometimes it seems that he doesn't like me. Actually, I don't think he likes me at all. <laughs> Why do I need to go to the title screen? Yeah, honestly, I kind of wish I could have started on a better vibe with him. Without realizing, you fall fast asleep. Yeah. Why do... Okay. I have so much fun doing Kale's voice. Not Kale, uh, Evelyn's voice. I have so much fun. And that's it for Kale's Day 2. Okay, I'm at the title screen. Oh, that's cute! That's cute! Why did I need to be at the title screen? Damien? Damien, why did I need to be at the title screen? I know! It's so cute! Next update is Wilbert! Fucking love Wilbert. He's so slay. He's so Yas Queen.
is there is there anything I needed to do here? Because otherwise, I'm going to leave off. The girl is too shy to be close with us. What else is to see than this man? Bro thinks he's slick. The teacher. Well, this was a lot of fun. I fucking love Evelyn. I love the voice that I gave her. It is so much fun to do. Well, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.